Hello, it's Hebby, and welcome back to the Dragon Marathon. But if you're new, then hello. Wings of Fire is a fantasy book series with 17 mainline and integral books. 17. All these books include a ton of characters and cool dragon tribes slash species. They are all technically one species since they can interbreed, but they're so morphologically different, maybe they're better classified as a subspecies or just highly diverse population groups. I don't know. But it's my mission to make all of them into a plush. The patterns for these plushies are up online for free, and part one of this challenge functions as a basic tutorial to make your own dragon. You can download the patterns through my Patreon in the description, print them out, and have your very own. Here are the rules for this challenge of epic proportions. I'll be making every single dragon who is in any way important based on my own subjective definition wherein I look at their wiki ref, and without reading the description I try to remember if I gave a rat's posterior about them. This is also generally alphabetical, and I will try my best to comply to some sort of mental vision between the character's book description, official references or book cover art, and their graphic novel appearance, if they have any of those things. But I am also subject to changing my mind. Uh, it's a very loose set of rules, I prefer to just let it roll. In the last videos we made Albatross, Anemone, Orclet, Arctic, Blaze, Burn, Blister, Chameleon, Clay, Clear Sight, Coral, Cricket, Carnelian, Cliff, Ruby, Dusky, Dune, Assassination, Container, a human-sized Darkstalker, 31 now completely named Seeming Princes in the Great Seeming Collab video, and we completed the first subject of our Wild Round voting system. Here's an update on that, because every so often I shall be breaking from the main challenge to make the top voted for characters as requested by the comments section of these videos. Because there's over 400 characters in this book series and most of them are wacky, one-off side character underachievers. Last time in the wild round, and also the first time we've had a wild round, we made the top voted for character. Although several characters essentially tied for this position, and so I shall be completing them when I am in need of a quick breather. And we've also made Whirlpool, who in this video shall be crushed by all of the characters who didn't get a chance to crush him last video. So thank you to my Whirlpool Hate Club members who keep Whirlpool in a perpetual state of agony for me. 8-Bit Beetle, The Wait Zaranek Fluffle, Ninja Kitty Awakens, Skywing Dad, and Phoenix Fire. Now it's time for the F list of characters, which is both F for the first letter of their names as well as F for false dragonets as a category. We get to say a lot of F words in this video. And to start off, we are making Fate Speaker. She is both an F name and a false dragonet. Let's start immediately. Fate Speaker is described as having black scales that have undertones of deep blue and purple. Her official base color ref leans quite heavily black purple, and her graphic novel appearance is a sort of navy blue most of the time. But I selected a purple toned dark gray as well as a blue toned black for her color scheme, as well as a light purple chest, because it included both of the colors which she is described as. And it looks a bit more like these images of her on different pages of the graphic novel. Plus, I just sort of like the feel of this particular piece of main body fabric. It's quite especially and noticeably soft. Awesome. Fate Speaker is also described as having silver scales at the corner of each of her eyes and some little freckly ones along her forehead and tail. But the eyeball sparkle scales have caused a bit of confusion in the lore of the story because Nightwings, which is what she is, are meant to only have this when they can read minds. And Fate Speaker definitely doesn't have the same strength of ability as Moonwatcher or Darkstalker, for instance, but she has been confirmed to pick up on a few emotions from people's thoughts, making her an empath. Which is exciting, honestly. It's a special Nightwing ability we haven't seen yet. I mean, you could think of it as Goblet of Wine Half Empty, that she has the worst mind-reading abilities ever, or you can be like, wow, epic, half a Goblet of Wine. Anyways, Fate Speaker also claims to have the other lost Nightwing power of Prophecy, and in canon, the Seers do not have a special scale marking, but I have been giving all of the Seer Nightwings we have encountered a Silver Star scale on their foreheads to represent it. But it doesn't exactly seem like she's any good at being prophetic if she is. Also, I just want to point out the absolute shade of this list of her supposed prophecies on the Wings of Fire fan wiki. Like, her and Starflight doing great things together remains to be determined. Really depends on your definition of great. Facing down Battle Winner and helping save the world was probably pretty great. Other than that though, 31% success ratio on her predictions. Only 6 out of 19 prophecies were true. I think any dragon with eyes has an equal or greater foresight ability than her. 
So yeah, it seems like the prophecy ideas are, as Starflight put it, purely psychological. And in our plushie, Fate Speaker will not be getting a forehead star. But honestly, it seemed to me that her powers were just a coping mechanism that resulted from her always being alone. She doesn't even seem to have parents. She grew up on the mainland, away from other Nightwings, for so much time, and the only other dragons her age were the false dragonettes, who she tried to bond with, but who she was ultimately really mistreated by. She might be a little annoying, that's true, but it can be true of anyone. And I interpret it as her seeking attention and seeking love. And she does become quite upset with her powers because they couldn't save Viper. She kind of forgets about that and goes back to insisting she has powers in like 10 minutes, but that's fair. Moon and the rest of the gang did that too. Justice for Carnelian! Anyways, Fate Speaker was originally friends with the false dragonettes, I mean, in quotation marks, including Viper. They were the only dragons her age around for her to talk to, and seemingly some of the only dragons willing to talk to her at all, although they only mocked her. Flame and Viper tried to kill her and nearly succeeded. Both Squid and Ochre were also excited at the prospect of her being replaced by Starflight, if not killed. But they were open to that idea too. And you know, Fate Speaker never even got the chance to tell them off. She even saved Flame's life and attempted to save Vipers, but they feel no love or gratitude to her. They're so terribly selfish and they do not deserve her at all. The false Dragonettes are generally regarded as a collection of basket cases by the real Dragonettes of Destiny. A whole basket weaving class, in fact. And they usually include Fate Speaker in that list. They think she's alright, but she isn't exactly one of them. She's a bit of an outsider. And even Sunny, the most loving and open dragonette of Destiny, is jealous and a little cool-shouldered to her right now in the story. Perhaps to some degree, Fate Speaker understands that her Nightwing powers are a lie but it seems like it was something she did because she was so lonely that she had to be special and magical in order to cope. And I think she's special. But I don't think she's had a good conclusion to her story. Her abusive teacher and friend figure dying in a volcano is, like, definitely an unorthodox solution to having no real friends as a narrative, but not super satisfying. I don't think her story has an ideal ending as it stands. Fate Speaker went from having no friends to having dragons who tolerate her. But that could all be solved by some more interaction with her and the dragonettes. Really what I felt went wrong with Fate Speaker was that she was intended to have more to do with the story, meaning to have a POV in the second arc, as confirmed by the author. Generally replacing Moonwatcher. Not complaining because I love Moonwatcher, but it does explain sort of why Fate Speaker had... I don't know... Gotten screwed up and thrown towards the waste paper bin, marginally missing the trash and landing right in the position of assistant librarian slash bellhop for the Jade Mountain Academy. I do not know if that is a highly competitive position to be selected for. Maybe some more stories will be written about Fate Speaker in the future and will finish off her arc. Maybe a winglet or a position in the fourth arc of Wings of Fire, which is, as of filming this video, confirmed but possibly in the distant future. But as of right now, I feel as if Fate Speaker is an incomplete character. Because she went from being detested and mistreated, but what has she got now? A slightly one-sided relationship with Starflight, who seems to consider her Visions situation fairly dumb, and who condescends to her on occasion. Even narrating Fate Speaker's willingness to delve into the volcanic ruins in the fourth book as more like naivete rather than bravery. And up until the exact end of Starflight's book, he was thinking of Fate Speaker as a slightly insane and loud, annoying sidekick, whilst he daydreamed about how much he loved Sunny instead of her. He changed his mind, uh, halfway, at the last second, but I don't think I'd be going out on a limb here to say that Fate Speaker and Starflight have no chemistry. It's like, well, okay, it's not nothing. But at best, it's like a titration experiment where you spend 45 minutes in the lab slowly eye-dropping chemicals into a container of other chemicals and waiting for the most subtle change of colours to signify you've completed the fun portion of your task and you can now begin doing maths about it. And I might be the exact wrong person to ask about romance because I do not experience that emotion, but that's my subjective take. Fate Speaker is getting seconds from the plot, in my opinion. Not even reheated leftovers. It's like stone-cold McDonald's french fries. She's second in line for a prophecy not even about her, second in line for Starflight's affection, 
And despite the possible future timeline in which it is implied she has dragonets with Starflight, that is, as of right now, not canon, and could also flip on a dime, I feel, if Sunny ever developed romantic feelings for Starflight. Now that's a prophecy that can be dubiously referred to as remains to be seen. Or maybe the three of them would just have to navigate a dragon divorce followed by a dragon personal growth and bonding saga and then a dragon polyamorous relationship where they all take care of the kids to just sort it all out once and for all in a way that everybody wins. But until that happens, Fate Speaker is just getting scraps. But I think Fate Speaker is a bit of a tragic character. I don't think she's necessarily annoying, but it is hard to determine how seriously she takes herself and her powers. And I really hope that she gets some more on-page time to bond with the characters who are meant to be her friends now, and so that she can heal from her previous experiences. I think Fate Speaker's brave and funny, and I think she has a beautiful design as well. Sunny even comments it looks like she's wearing her own jewellery built into her scales. And I have my fingers crossed for more Fate Speaker content in the future. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. Here is your wet sloppy dragon kiss, of course delivered to you by Fate Speaker today. And of course... Thank you very much to my patrons who support me with making these plushies. Gimba, ADH Dream 1409, Kitten Mikey, Samuel Sanchez, Mono Deer, Aninka Lemasson, Grey, Solvai, Phoenix Fire, I Like the Dumb Bunny Shrimp, Fennec is here, Trooper Cat, Poppy Willow, Indigo Woilies, Fantasy Skyming Dad, Jed Gore, Aussie Shark, The Starving Child, Ninja Kitty Awakens, Lime Sharks, Caroline T, Copa, Coco, Vanessa Ananara Burrows, Verla, Misty Owl, Rhythm the Raptor, Aliana, T Copper Silver, Miffy, Victoria Toucan, Be the Cat, Racing Wolf, Grey Malkin, Gato Catamus, The Weight Zaranek Fluffle, 8 Bit Beetle, Anonymous Running Dragon, Nicole Sutherland, and Danger Noodles Are Cool.